I truly think that people can smell authenticity. Like you can tell. It also depends on what you as a brand are wanting. Are you wanting just to get in front of a lot of people? Then maybe that's not as important to you. But do you want to get in front of the right people? So if something reaches 100,000 people, does that really matter if none of those 100,000 people are your audience or are the people who are going to buy something? Welcome to the EarFluence podcast, where businesses and brands can learn to amplify their expertise. I'm Cece Huffman, producer at EarFluence, and with me today is Christina Riley, someone whose passion for exploring the beauty of North Carolina has not only led to an extensive collection of travel guides, but has also fostered a vibrant community of adventurers. Founded with her partner, Carl, NC Tripping's articles, social media, and podcast, NC Travel Chat, offer insights, stories, and interviews that bring the magic of North Carolina to life. Today, we're going to be talking about being an influencer and how partnering with influencers can benefit you and your business. Thanks for joining me, Christina. Thank you so much for having me. I love that you're on today for a couple of reasons. One, um, because I love talking about traveling in North Carolina because I'm from North Carolina. I've always lived in North Carolina. So I love when people appreciate it, mm-hmm. I think, because especially because now, especially here, so many people aren't from yeah here anymore like Mm -hmm. it used to be we were all from here and now it's like oh I'm from like there's a couple that we know is from Australia they're Mm -hmm. like we can't believe that you're from Raleigh yeah it's like there's not many of you left no there's really not there's really not so I love talking about North Carolina and I love um just I love influencing and watching people influence not because I particularly want to be one but I'm just Mm -hmm. kind of like fascinated yeah. by the whole thing. There's a lot going on there. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to talk all about it. So I guess first, tell us about NC Tripping a little bit more than what I just kind of said at the beginning sure. and how you got started. Sure. So my husband and I, we met in West Virginia. So we are one of those who are not originally from here. Mm-hmm. And we moved uh, abroad to South Korea. So we lived in Korea for oh, five nice. years. Very cool. Yeah. I have one of my best friends is from South Korea. And we um, we taught English there. And while we were there was kind of when we got bit by the blogging bug mm-hmm. of this is how we communicate with our family back home is by writing on the internet and Keep Facebook. Keep everybody updated yeah. all at once. Everything all at once. Like I remember I wrote a blog post once about how different it was to – take the trash out in Korea. Because really? I was like, this is like, yeah, you have to buy specific bags that are mm-hmm. only for trash and they have to be bagged. And it was very like, it was very interesting and strange. And so I wanted to share it with my family back home. Mm-hmm. And that was when we bought a camera. I had never had a camera before, a DSLR, nothing. We bought it in Korea and just started to document our lives. Um, and then after five years, we decided that we wanted to come and home and make a new home because West Virginia wasn't it. And so we chose North Carolina because my sister had just moved here. So after backpacking in Asia for f- uh, several, like, nine weeks. Uh, You're so strong for that. <laughs> <laughs> that was pre-kids. <laughs> I have no children. You're not going to catch me with a backpack walking for a long time anywhere. Every two days. New new location every two days while As we were not, backpacking. I'm was, an inside girl, but I love that It was that so much you. fun. We loved it. Anyway, you decided to come here. After yeah. the, you put the backpacks down, yeah, we you came here. We put the backpacks here. down and came to uh, Durham just because we had fallen in love with it while we were visiting uh, my sister who had just moved here. And we decided to treat North Carolina just like we – treated Korea and Asia of like, what's here? What's there? What's all around you? Mm -hmm. And in that, we kept blogging. We kept doing things. And then my husband had um, picked up a corporate job while he was here of like, let's pay the bills. Let's try and get through. But Mm -hmm. his end goal was always to do this full time. Right. And I was like, no way. No way, man. (laughs) There's no way you can make a living doing this full time. And so in 2019, he lost his job. We had just had a daughter, and he had had so many interviews back to back to back with other places and just couldn't land them. And that will really wear you down. It and will. you will just give up completely. Yeah, but he didn't. And Incredible for and him. It, yeah. Another I mean, person who's stronger than I am. Yeah, he, <laughs> I mean, he had, his his word buzzword was pertinacity. Is like, you have to keep just going. Mm-hmm. 
So we took that as a sign from the universe of like, well, we don't have anything else. So let's go full time into blogging and see where it takes us. Just commit. Yeah. yeah. And the the month that he lost his job, we had made like $400 from the blog. So like That's, enough, but not enough yeah. to like support a family. Substantial yeah. though for a blog yeah. for sure. So we, um, we kept going and kept going. And I, interestingly enough, I did not want to do Instagram. I did not want to mm-hmm. do social media. I did not want to do any of it. And I resisted it for a while. But then you didn't have a choice because no one does. I know. <laughs> and then I was like, well, I mean, I'm already here. So I just might as well. Right. And if you're going to post it somewhere else, I might as well just also put it yeah. on Instagram. And what, yeah. Yeah. The and it, it became a thing where looking back on all these experiences that we had had leading up to now just gave us the tools that we needed to be to know what to do with this new thing of social media and being Mm -hmm. an influencer. Um, So we at that point niched down and decided to focus just on North Carolina. And here we are with NC Tripping. So we've been full-time blogging, influencing since 2019. I love that. And I love following people like you all, even though I am from North Carolina. Like I have family in the mountains. I Mm -hmm. have family at the beach. I have family in all different directions. But I still – and I'm – born and raised in Raleigh, I still learn from people Mm. who have that outsider perspective about all of these different things that either I've just begun to look past because I'm so used to seeing it or I haven't looked in that specific area to find. Mm -hmm. And things are always changing too. And even now, like I've been asked, are you ever going to expand out of North Carolina? And I'm like, I have too much work to do here. Like I just, I don't know. (laughs) Right. I'm doing, there's plenty of content for me here. There's so much to do. Yeah. It really does change. It feels like every single day. There's something new announced, something new that's coming. So we'll talk, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about North Carolina at the end, Mm -hmm. but let's talk about influencer marketing now. How would you define it like is it really just like people saying hi um I use this product they sent it to me and it's wonderful and you should buy it too or is it maybe something more oh it's totally more than that (laughs) it's totally more than that I think that um you know TLDR influencer marketing is a relationship between a brand and a person who has built a curated audience Mm -hmm. and audience that trusts yes an audience that trusts and that's the most important thing of um you know People who come to my page over time start to learn things about me and connect Mm -hmm. with me as a person because they're similar because they see those things that, you know, as an audience, an influencer can connect to, well, I'm a millennial and I have kids, but I also like hiking and I also like food. So there's all these little things that make a person a person. Right. (laughs) And (laughs) it sounds like Dr. Seuss. Are a person with a person's mouths. a person, even if they like hiking and food. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so you can connect to these influencers in those ways of like, oh, I like hiking too, so I can connect to a, an audience. And you start to build this curated little pod of different adjectives of things that everyone likes. Mm-hmm. And essentially, that's what your influencer is: is you have built an audience of people who like the same things as you do and trust you because you've been authentic about your experiences. Right. It's like it, they feel – it's almost like building a friendship, which yeah. is very one-sided mm-hmm. friendship. Yeah. But what types of partnerships for influencers are there? So obviously mm-hmm. it's more than just the here's this product that I got. You should have it too. Like yeah. what kind of partnerships are there possible and what kind of partnerships do you specifically engage in? Yeah, sure. So we do um, a variety of paid and unpaid partnerships whether that's with a small business that's like, this is my product, I'd really like for you to share it on Instagram or a restaurant or destination as well. The thing about those partnerships is that they are always mutually beneficial. Right. So whether that is being paid or not paid, there's still something that we're both getting, but we're also both sharing with each other, Mm -hmm. which I think is – an interesting caveat that not many people think about when they talk about influencer marketing is that it it has to benefit both sides. Yeah, I think people think partnership and a lot of times think very much like business deal Mm -hmm. where it's just very transactional. But in the personality age like that, you do have to have both sides benefit. And it has to, I think, 
people take into consideration, like, is my audience going to be interested in this? Or you have to go to an influencer where it's like, I think your audience would Mm -hmm. like this because X, Y, or Z. It's not just like you can go out to any person and be like, hey. Because if I post about something and my audience isn't interested in it, then that both hurts the business that Mm -hmm. I partnered with and me because then my audience no longer trusts me or they feel like I'm selling to them. And ultimately, that's not my goal. My goal is to make the best content that I possibly can for my audience, whether that's with a partnership or without. Right. And it's just a total waste of time and money for the people who maybe reached out to you for it because it it got them nowhere. Yeah. But could you share some examples of some that were successful? Yeah, sure. So just in the past month, I did a partnership with the NC Mountain Fair, Mm -hmm. Mountain State Fair, which I had had a lot of feedback from people that they had never heard of it before. And it shooting the content as well was super easy. It felt natural. I was really happy with the content that I collected because I also, I took my six year old with me, and so right. that's also a caveat of a lot of um, my influencing is, <laughs> <laughs> is that my children are involved in it too, and right. so trying to navigate still being a parent and watching making sure they're safe and, you know, behaving themselves. Right. But also capturing content at the same time. And so that was an instance where, like, my daughter and I, we went just the two of us. We had a mother-daughter weekend, got a hotel room, enjoyed ourselves um, hiking the next day and went to an apple farm and all that stuff. But the partnership was with the NC Mountain Fair. Mm -hmm. And um, it went over really well with our audience and people were really interested in it. I thought that it was it's a great alternative to the state fair. If the state fair is too busy and wild and it yes a lot cuz it's getting that way, this is a great alternative. Yeah, absolutely. It's much more peaceful. Yeah. I did an episode um of Raleigh Magazine's podcast. Go listen to that everyone where we <laughs> talked about the NC State Fair and our memories from it and it is chaotic mm-hmm. and but it's also kind of fun. Mm-hmm. So, and it's coming up. It is. Soon. So, or it's already happened. <laughs> How do you identify the right people? So we talked about how, you know, the product or service or business or event or whatever needs to work with both the influencer and the influencer's Mm -hmm. audience and the the people who have the thing. So how do you identify somebody who is right for you? I truly think that people can smell authenticity, like, you can tell. Yeah, that's kind of true. It, 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 and it is. And it, it also depends on what you as a brand are wanting. Are you mm-hmm. wanting just to get in front of a lot of people? Then maybe that's not as important to you. But mm-hmm. do you want to get in front of the right people? So right. if something reaches 100,000 people, does that really matter if none of those 100,000 people are your audience or are the people who are going to buy something? Right. That's something that we talk about with podcasts a Mm -hmm. lot too is as you're growing your audience, you're – especially a podcast is such a slow build. You're not going to have a million listeners at once, even though it would be nice if it worked that way. It just doesn't. And we tell people it's not about having the highest numbers. Mm -hmm. It's about having the most – like finding the right people that you're trying to talk to. Not every you don't want to talk to everybody. Mm-hmm. You want to if your audience is small, but it's the people who matter. Yeah, that's what's important. Yeah. So you don't necessarily need the influencer with the biggest number. No, yeah, you it don't. Sounds like and there are things that as me as an influencer, when I look at other influencers, I pay attention to things like, you know, who is in their comments? Is it a whole bunch of other creators and only creators, or is it? authentic people. Yeah. Are they asking questions? And and all that to say, as a creator, I also comment on other creators' stuff because I support them too. Right. But you want to see a mix of that. You want to see a mix of people being supported by their colleagues while also finding new people. Mm-hmm. You know, if I see other people commenting and tagging other people, says, hey, have you seen this? Or, hey, let's go go here. Or conversations that aren't direct with me, that's what I love because that's when I know that this is real people who are like, hey, you want to go do this? Right. And those are things that I look for. Um, and also, is the creator commenting back? Mm-hmm. Are they talking with their audience? Are they engaging with them? Because if they're not, then kind of like, wh- where does this go from here? You have to right. make it past first base. <laughs> like, yeah. You know? Like, you have to be a real person. Yes. You can't just 
post the video and then wash your hands up and then be done. Yeah. Like, you have to show that you really, I mean, I guess you really care yeah. about the people. And it's like- You even, are doing the influencing. It, even as many notifications as I get in, I still read almost 99% of them. Right. I still see them all or I see I see everything, whether I respond to it or not. Yeah. And, and that's, you want to be able to show that not only to your audience, but also to any brands that you're also working with. Right. You have, you, that also helps you know who your audience yeah. really is. If you do interact with yeah. them and talk to them, it gives you a better idea of what they might be looking mm-hmm. for too. Yeah. Is there a way to measure like how well one of these deals does? So I know like sometimes people will be like, use my code, da da da, da. right? You can measure maybe yeah. how many people use the code. Or if you're like me and you just have honey, sometimes you use a random influencer's code because yeah. it gets you money off and yeah. it is what it is. But you can kind of measure mm-hmm. that way too. Are there other ways to measure? So I went back and forth on this question on whether or not you can measure ROI. And I'm going to say that there is not just one way to measure it. Because, or, or, acceptable uh, answer. Yeah, a a solid (laughs) way. Cause like, sure, the code, the code works. Yeah. Um, We don't do a, a ton of those kind of influencer products marketing with codes, but. If you post something, so say I, I work with a brand, <clears throat> I post a reel about it. Somebody in my audience saves the reel. They follow the account. A year later, they might buy it. They might book it. Because mm-hmm. especially when we're talking about travel, it's not as easy or instant as like right. a, a pair of leggings. Yeah. So it's kind of like a bubble and a ripple that happens of, you know, they see it the first time. They like it. They think about it. And it keeps building. And the more that they see it, they start to remember and think about and plan from right. there. Um, you know, I've had accounts, or especially with rentals, where it can be a lot harder of them of wanting that ROI mm-hmm. of like, well, only X, Y, and Z number of people have booked. And it's like, well, a year from now, they might still book because right. they might be looking for something. And they remember, oh, I saw a yeah. video about this place or whatever. Yeah. Or they followed the account and mm-hmm. or things like that that I can't quantify. I can't find that. I can't like not as as not as many people come back and tell me, oh, I went here because yeah. of you. Because it's more like, oh, I saw it on Instagram or I saw it on TikTok. Right. And they don't necessarily remember. And so I go back and forth between like my job is when I partner with someone is to create the best content that I possibly can mm-hmm. to my audience. And that's kind of what the paid partnership becomes of like, I am coming to you, I'm capturing this content and I'm giving you access to my audience. But after I hit publish, I have absolutely no control over right. what happens from there, which is like, it's nerve wracking for me, especially mm-hmm. when like it's a big deal or it's something that I have a lot of expectations on. Yeah, or you really like and yeah. you want to do and well. And I want them and, to yeah. do well. And it and it, sometimes it doesn't. Of like I've had video content that I've made that I was so proud of and I was like, this is going to go viral. It's great. <laughs> and then it doesn't meet my expectations. Yeah. it's all, and Or you do something that's just like a total throwaway yeah. and everybody loves it and it's yeah. the most popular thing you've ever made. Yeah. And, and I'm like, I no spent hours on this and you don't care. <laughs> right. So I think that that is um, managing the expectations and making sure that they are clear for both the brand and the influencer of mm-hmm. like, I'm not here to get you thousands of followers because I can't control that. I'm not here to get you tons of bookings either because I also can't control that. Mm-hmm. But what I can do is I can grant you access to my audience and I can create the content the best way that I can. That is a very great way to put that. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so some sponsorships, you know, are for like a one-off video mm-hmm. and some sponsorships are more long term. Mm-hmm. Do you think one is better than the other? Is it kind of dependent on what it is? Like what is your opinion on length? I mean, like everybody wants guaranteed money, right? Yeah, that's facts. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I agree with that one. I think that um, you know, long term relationships are so important in this industry because it not only secures the bag, mm-hmm. but also you are you already know how to work with each other. Mm-hmm. You already know how, you know, how 
to submit an invoice or you already know their expectations or you already know how they work and expectations are met on both sides. Um, but that being said, a lot of what we have are also one hit wonders and that has to do with budgets. You know, like if you're working with small businesses and they might not have the budget for marketing, that's, that's also okay. And we welcome that as long as like, you know, everybody's happy and something we tend to also do, um, with paid sponsorships is we'll also take that content later and repurpose it in a new way not paid. It doesn't like if it fits the repurposing, then we use it that way because whether or not something is paid, we still believe in it. Exactly. Like if I like it, I like it. And I'm going to, if you want to pay me to come, then I'm going to come Right. (laughs) either way. (laughs) Exactly. I was going to talk about this because I liked it and it's just also a benefit that now they're also paying me to share, tell you about it too. Sure. And it's secured time in my calendar, basically of like one of those things of like, if we are so busy that I can't guarantee you that I'm going to make it out there. And, and see your small business or to do this. But one way to guarantee a spot on my calendar is to partner together mm-hmm. in a paid way. And that's like, okay, well, then I will definitely, right. <laughs> definitely. I'll make be my, there. I'll be there. I'll yeah. make my way to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So do you think it's better to like start with a short-term partnership and see yeah. if something works and then move into a long-term? Yeah. Or do you think – like, yeah, I think that a lot point? of them are short term. And then if they're happy, they repeat business. Yeah. And that's how it kind that of keeps sense. going. You know, we have a couple of PR firms that we will continuously come back to us for new campaigns for different clients. Mm-hmm. And we love that. That's great. That We're is blissfully wonderful. there for it. Yes. Um, but that being said, a lot of the partnerships that we get are small businesses. So it's not repeat, but it could be year after year. Or things like, or it will change from, you know, a social media campaign to an email newsletter campaign or an event Mm -hmm. sponsorship. And it really, like, it depends on marketing budgets and constraints from the other people of that we can't control that. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So if somebody is looking to have some influence, they're Mm. doing some influencing, and they are looking for their first sponsorship, how the heck do they do that? How do they go about it? I started off really professional, but let's be real. How the heck do they do it? How do you find your first sponsorship? I think that you, what you would first do is find something that you already know and love and reach out to them Mm -hmm. and see, hey, do you have, um, you know, an influencer marketing budget. Are you interested in this? I really love your brand mm-hmm. or your product. And I think that this would be a good fit for my audience. And just kind of prove, like, you want to work anyways with people who really, that you really enjoy their product. Mm-hmm. So it's just a, a matter of forging a relationship with them. Right. Think and, about what it is you like. Yes. If- Figure out who you can talk to and build a relationship that way. Yes. So where has been your favorite place? Don't ask me that. That's like asking my favorite child. Well, which one is your favorite child? I also have an answer for that, but I'm not sure. (laughs) So (laughs) it's the one that sleeps. (laughs) Respect. So we have in the studio with us, if you're watching the video version, we have the North Carolina bucket list behind us. Um, so maybe, I mean, you can pick it off the bucket list. You can pick it off the top of your head. But I mean, like- it's, it's the cover image. Um, so the cover image is Cape Ladder or Cape Hatteras Lighthouse and also Crabtree Falls. Um, Crabtree Falls is my favorite waterfall in all of North Carolina. Mm-hmm. It's one of those, like, when you're laying down and doing a meditation and they're like, what's your favorite space in nature? <laughs> that, that picture is it. And, yeah. um... But that being said, it's like we are continuously surprised and the amount of zip codes that I have in Zillow are just too many. I have too many alerts set up. Love. (laughs) But I think we're staying in Durham forever, forever, ever. Yeah? Yeah. Well, we're so happy to have you here. (laughs) How can our listeners connect with you, learn more about you, learn more about North Carolina and all its wonderful waterfalls and lighthouses and other things that we have? We are on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok at NC Tripping, as well as all of our articles at nctripping.com. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me. This is so much fun. Thank you all for listening to the Earfluence podcast. If you need help with your podcast, reach out to us, visit earfluence.com and we'll talk with you next time.